Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Chuscaria. Chuscaria is a meat game in which you're going to be going to a steakhouse and purchasing meat. The game plays for two to six players. It's about 25 to 35 minutes to play, and it's about ages 13 and up. In the game Chuscaria, you are going to be basically sitting down at a table and you will have your little flipper right here, right? It reminds me of when you're going to like Brazilian barbecue in one of those fancy steakhouses. And and when you want more food and when you want no more food which just means we're always gonna have this right more food more food but in the game you're going to be taking food and trying to eat as much food as you can you need to have food on your plate in order to do so there's going to be uh, at portions of time where they're gonna have like the passadori come around and pass out meat to you and sometimes you're gonna be giving meat to other players but you want to avoid not eating meat you don't want to fill up because when you're eating bread or salad or any of the other things you're not eating meat and in this game you have to eat as much meat as you can meat is very important whoever has eaten the most amount of points at the end of the game or the most meat at the end of the game is gonna be the winner let's go ahead and take a look so here we have the contents for Chuscaria and as you can see you're going to be starting off with a salad and some meat this is gonna be what everybody starts with along with your sim and your now or your go and stop uh, card as well here. You're going to be getting a turn action card as well as two decks. The menu which is going to have all your different types of meat and then your food deck or your Chuscaria deck that is going to be your ability to play cards from your hand as well as the chance to summon a Pasadore which is going to div divvy out more meat. Um, and that is mainly what you're going to be getting. You're also going to get a box front and back as well as a rule book. So to begin the game you just have to have somebody who's eaten at a steakhouse or someplace like that Brazilian barbecue. Whoever has done that that's going to get to go first. You can make up your own, I suppose, if you'd like. And you're going to follow the turn action card. This has the first basic rules, and then it has the first person and uh, all, all remaining players' turns on here. You need to perform two actions. You're starting with your steak and your salad here, as well as your button and your card. And on your turn, you're able to do a couple things. You can flip any one food request token on the table, which means you can flip it from green to red or red to green, which means whenever you have a red token on, that means you're not going to be able to get food from the Pasadori or from anybody else. And when it's on green, it means you're allowed to get more food. You can also perform a single eat action, which means that anything on your plate, you're allowed to eat, whether it be negative points or whether it be positive points, positive mainly going to be the meat cards. You play an action card from your hand, and that could be a wide variety of things, like can I get that for you, or look over there, or even second helping. These are cards that are going to either give meat to other players, force players to take things you don't want to eat, and also eat more than you normally would be able to eat. Another thing you can do is discard any number of cards from your hand and draw that many cards from the action deck. And finally, at the end of your turn, you draw back up to your hand size and your food request token. If it's on the green side, you get to take a food token put on your plate. Okay, so we're back to the game and I've went ahead and set it up. As you can see, everybody's got their food token as well as their starting meat and their starting salad. You're also going to get a hand size of four cards, which is your max. Your plate size is a max of four as well. This is all the basic rules to the game. After you do that, you're going to flip this over and everyone is also going to have one of these cards. It's two actions, right? So the first player will just go ahead and say is this person over here. They can choose to do one or two of these four options. You can do two of the same one if you want or mix and match however you'd like to do. You could play an action card simply by choosing one of these cards. Some of them say play with their food, which is redirect an action card played against you to another player. Or fo a co food coma, prevent any one player from performing a single eat action. So if they try and eat, you can say no, you can't eat. Play with their food, we talked about, and stop playing with the food, cancel the other player's action card or reaction card. So kind of like a counter spell card, right? Whenever you choose, you could also choose, um, whenever you choose to eat something, you can also get their ability. Sometimes it'll say something specific on the card. These ones here do not, but there are cards in the deck that will say so. So for instance, his turn, he could simply choose to eat one of his foods, which maybe he'll eat this one right here. And then if he wants, he can simply, and this goes into his point total for the end of the game. And then if he wants, he can turn one of their player's cards cards over just like this, which means they're not going to be able to get more food. The end of his turn, he's going to make sure his hand size is max of a four. His way he'd draw up if he didn't have a max hand size of four. And then he would simply take a card from the menu and place it on his uh, plate so that he can eat it for the next round. The next player would then get to go and maybe one of their actions would be to make sure that they flip this back over so they can choose to eat certain things. They'll check their cards here really quick. It says move a food card from another player's plate to your plate. So he could choose to play this card here and to take this because it's worth four 
four points. The points are located in the top right hand corner and put it on his plate. So that's kind of useful there. And then after he's done his two actions, he gets another piece of food menu, puts, puts it right there, bam. And so now he's got two fours and a one. However, none of these points are scored yet. So, so people can still take them if they want. This player over here now, he's gonna get his turn. What does he want to do? Let's go ahead and see if he has anything cool. All players eat all the food on their plate. This counts as a single action for each player. Uh, discard all side and dessert items from your plate. So like anything of these negative points. Food coma, prevent them from getting food and uh, the play with your food action. He will, hmm, what does he want to do? Does he want to perform an eat action for a point? Does he want to flip a food request token over? Or does he want to play an action card or discard cards? I guess he'll go ahead and discard some cards. He doesn't necessarily need. How about he'll discard these two cards. When he does that, he's going to get two new cards. And maybe he can use them. What's this one say? You're, what, are you going to eat that and move a food card? Yeah, he will. That's, that's what he'll take because this is a plus four. He wants that. And then the next player is going to get to go after. Oh, make sure you have your hand size to four. Don't forget that. The next player would get to go. And oh, and you're always going to get a card. Sorry, a menu card at the end of your turn, provided that you have the green side open. So that's negative three. Uh, that's not going to be very good. So maybe he didn't want to actually discard that card that was going to prevent him, allow him to discard all the negative cards. Did he do that? Uh, no, he didn't. He still has that, luckily. Okay, good. So now it's his player's turn here. What does he want to do? He doesn't have a lot of options as far as eating things goes. Uh, so he could choose if he wants to... Uh, we'll go ahead and discard these two cards here. and He'll draw two new ones here. This says, force any one player to... Uh, place with one player whose food token is green uh, up to draw a food immediately. So for instance, this guy here, he played this card on him, giving this guy a food immediately. And this player has to eat the lowest food total uh, card on, on his plate here. So he has five. If you ever have more than four, you have to eat. So he has two of them here that are negative, so he has to take one and he has to eat it, which means he's now negative three at the end of the game. That's really, really mean. This guy would then end his turn by drawing one of these and another piece of food would come down. Awesome, this one says actually has an effect. It says immediately after you eat this, you get another eat action for free. That's pretty useful. This one says what you can flip over a player's food request token. That's pretty useful as well. And the game would continue. Play would continue while players are continuously getting new and interesting types of food and eventually eating these things and turning them into points. Hopefully they're going to be eating the positive ones and not the negative ones. However, these cards are going to allow you to stop them from eating, move your, their food around, or you move your food around, and so on and so forth. There's also an interesting card here, which I'll go ahead and talk about really quick, which is called Summon the Pasadore. Here it is right here. And this is an action card that happens instantly as soon as you draw it. You draw a new action card at the start of the player who drew this. So um, yeah, starting with the player, you draw a new action card, and then starting with the player who drew this card, all players Players who uh, players whose food request token is green get an extra food card. So if this guy was drawn, all these guys had green, they would all get an additional food item. Remember though, if you ever go over five, you have to eat the lowest one. So you have to be careful not to have a bunch of nasty cards that have not gotten rid of. It would be very useful if this guy actually played, let's see if I can find it. Oh, I don't know if it is in here anymore. If he had it, oh yeah, here it is. Can I get that for you? So she will take all the negative foods from him so that he has, doesn't have to eat this stuff. So this all goes away. And that's the basic idea of the game. Whoever has eaten the most points at the end of the game after all of these have been distributed is gonna be the winner of the game, Chuscaria. So a couple caveats before we get into the review. There is quite a lot of different action cards in the game, and there is quite a lot of different strategy that is going to be used with these cards. Sometimes you want to get more plate stuff on your plate to, to eat, or get rid of stuff on your plate if you have negatives, as well as forcing people to eat their own plate of food. You can actually make players draw an additional card and be forced to eat, or even in fact just eat your entire plate. Uh, stop playing with the food. There's a lot of these kind of cards which are like reactionary cards you can play out of turn, which is also useful as well. And they do different things such as stopping somebody from eating, stopping somebody from playing a card on you, stopping somebody from trying to get another card, or even canceling their ability to even pull the food out of the plate. Anyway, so let me tell you what I think about the game now. First of all, this game is a take that style game, but it has a little bit of management as well. You need to manage your tableau, what is on your plate. Eating certain pieces of food is going to be beneficial at certain points in the game, certain time. Uh, and because you are eating different foods, you are going to be then doing those actions on those cards and kind of debilitating your opponents at the same time. 
or there's going to be bigger pieces of meat that are worth a lot of points, but it's going to cost two actions, or it's going to cost the ability you're going to have to do something negative to in order to get that stuff. Uh, there are cards that are worth less, but they'll give you additional stuff. I think that uh, one that's very useful here is this one, the Filet Mignon. It's going to immediately let you play an action card for free, and there's also another one that lets you eat again after you've already eaten that one, so it's basically a free two or three points. And it's all about quantity over quality, I suppose. The more meat you get, the more likely it is you're going to win have more points at the end of the game. However, you have to avoid all the big scary negatives because they're never going to be good for you. And the negative threes specifically are very, very detrimental. You think you've won the game until you pull a bunch of these guys out and now you're in trouble. The additional Pasadore card that pops out is always helpful to everyone except for those people who have lots of bad cards in their hand. You'll see a lot of times players are going to be drawing from the action deck and pulling out the cards from their hand, getting rid of the things so they can get that one card they need that's going to help them. I've just cut in my hand before just so that I could pull and eat your entire plate card because I had a ton of points there and I didn't want anybody to try and stop me. And then all of a sudden somebody plays a card that stops that action card from happening and now I'm screwed because I draw an extra card and have to eat the lowest card and it happens to be a negative. There are those times in the game when that's going to happen. The game has amazing looking food. The uh, action cards are fine. They're cool. They look like basically the different things that can happen while you're eating at a Brazilian barbecue. It was very reminiscent of Brazilian barbecue for me. I had a lot of fond memories as a child and as a high schooler going to the Brazilian barbecue with a lot of my friends. And because of that, I really enjoyed the theme of this game. It is very, very thematic and it works really well with itself, as well as giving you that memory of having a huge, like, <laughs> smorgasbord of food where the person's sawing off the food and putting it on your plate and you're just like I want to say stop I really do but give me more give me more food because I just love all this food um only thing I'm sad about in the game really is that the little they're like little bananas the little cinnamon bananas those are negative points and those were like plantains that's what it is and those are negative points and I wanted them to be positive but realistically it's all about eating the meat because it's the most important Thing and eating it at a steak place. So overall, this game is really fun. It has a little bit of a take that, has a little bit of management, and I definitely would consider you guys picking it up because I personally really, really enjoyed this game. I've played it live. I have played it multiple, multiple times when I didn't need to just because I really enjoyed the thematic aspect of the game, the experience of it, and that little bit of competitive nature in the game gives it a nice little touch. So for me, Chuscaria, A+, I'd like more on my plate.